Hello and welcome to another uh, program of the virtual conference live talks with myself, Dov Ben Yakov Kurtzman. And once again, thank you to uh, L'Orchestra Cinematheque for their license and playing that wonderful music on our countdown. We have a whole range of music that we will be playing on our shows. And uh, thank you once again to them. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And preparation for the show today, um, I was totally blown away. Do we have a very special treat for you? And um, none other than Graciela Rovner from Sweden. Uh, titles that are too many to mention, and so I'm going to um, ask her to introduce herself in a few minutes. But this is a very, very different show than to what you've been used to. We've been um, going over the past few weeks almost daily now with the virtual conference live talks. We've had a very wide range of special guests, but this is, I guarantee you, this is totally unique. And uh, Graciela is a very good friend of mine. I'm so pleased that she's agreed to do this. She's a busy lecturer at university. She has her own um, institute. And uh, she is the only uh, psychotherapist in the world that is also uh, acceptance and commitment therapy peer-reviewed trainer. And titles aside, what I have been asking all of my guests through this whole virtual conference live talks, one of the really important parts of this program is that it has an experiential element in it. There's something experiential. It's not a chat show. It's not a podcast, vlogcast kind of thing um, where people just promote themselves. The idea is that there is actual experiential value that the people watching this, whether you're live on Facebook, and this is going out to four or five groups uh, in Facebook, uh, with over 5,000 um, viewers potentially watching in. It's also going out on YouTube live. Um, and so people are either coming in and watching this live or they are watching this on uh, the replay. This is not just a little bit of experiential stuff today. This is experiential like you have not experienced before in this show. So without further ado, there's enough of me talking here. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce you now to Dr. Graciela Rovner. Wow. Unbelievably happy to see you here and... Uh, it's really exciting. I'm really exciting. And when we were setting up and I saw your whole studio there and it's just amazing. And you're looking amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Dov. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, and I just want to clarify, I'm the only that is not working as a psychotherapist. I'm a physiotherapist trainer. In, in Did I say psychotherapist? Yes, you did. Oh, my goodness. How could I have made a mistake? Of course, I meant physiotherapist. Absolutely <laughs> physiotherapist. And what a physiotherapist you are. I've got to tell everybody, this woman is incredible, and she looks incredible, and she works her body incredibly, and, and I'm sure that we're going to really benefit from her. But she does something. Now, I'm from Scotland, so I know what cold water is like. Uh, but she does this amazing thing in that she bathes. Is it daily? I don't even know. Is it daily? Yes, She bathes daily, daily in freezing cold water. <laughs> and I've actually seen a video of her doing it. And I was freezing just watching um, <laughs> you do it. I have no idea how you do that. And I would like you to actually mention um, to our viewers at one point uh, while we're together today, what that is all about, because that is really an incredible thing um, 
to do, and I and I've and I've seen you do it. It's amazing. Um, so basically, we've got this is an inter an interactive show, and so there's people that will be writing in. For instance, um, we've got uh, Denise from uh, Manchester saying that she's here and she's watching and she's ready. Um, Norman Evans is coming to us live from Toronto. So we have a Toronto audience, a Manchester audience. We've got um, Avi Gorilli from Jerusalem in Israel uh, coming in. And uh, also Lee Moore is uh, from Israel and she's watching too. And uh, Norman Evans says that he's interested in the experiential value. And so that, uh, yeah, that's definitely what he's going to get today. And we've got a Facebook user saying hi. And I'm, I remind everybody that uh, if you've not um, registered your name, then please put it in the comments so that we can, um, we can show who you're from. So hopefully as we go along, we will be able to get comments and questions from you. Um, but first of all, I, I, we can't go on without mentioning that we're in very distressing times, uh, Graciela. And, and you, you know, you're from Sweden and you were explaining to me, because there's a lot of talk in the UK, for instance, about how Sweden is not really in lockdown. And so they are doing a whole different kind of thing. But you told me something very interesting, and that is that in Sweden, the culture is that recommendations are taken very seriously. It doesn't have to be a hard law. Um, so maybe you can tell me a little bit about how you personally are handling, you know, all this kind of thing um, that we're going through in the world today. Well, um, as you said, we don't have lockdown. We have a lot of recommendations. So in my private life, what I not doing as normal is going to the gym um, and I'm not commuting to Stockholm to teach at Karolinska Institute, I'm teaching uh, virtually. What else? Well, all the trips around the world I had during this spring were canceled. Some of these things are um, like conference talks or some of them are still moved virtually, others move later on. And then I have my husband um, at home with salary, which is fantastic. Uh, so we are doing yeah. a lot of things at home and having time together and a lot of self-care every morning. Um, so we have the gym here at home. You can see part of it, probably something hanging, hanging there. So every day we are doing uh, yoga and some gymnastics and then we train um, sports as well and run wow. and take a bath. And I, I meet my children and grandchild anyway, because we are not in risk uh, groups, health, healthy-wise. Right. Fantastic. And so you just mentioned grandchildren there. And so I just want to tell everybody that I also um, agree that you don't look old enough to have grandchildren, that's for sure. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, but you're, you're, of course, you're, hopefully we'll learn some of those secrets from you uh, today <laughs> while we have you on, because you certainly have either us either a secret potion or it's all this movement and uh, that uh, that does that for you. So we want to learn that. I do particularly. Um, but you know, you know, Dov, I, I was born in the late 50s and uh, had asthma as a child. So I was heavily medicated with cortisone, which made me very, very big and uh, even Valium to calm me down. Wow. And so uh, in my te teens, I developed um, pain. So I had juvenile um, rheuma, yeah, some rheumatic thing. And at that time, my mother, it was, I'm very grateful, she decided to, to stop with all these medicines and go over to more natural kind of medicines. So that's my path of um learning how to deal with my health chronic health issue, issues since very very early um the asthma the allergies and of course the movement so i was forbidden to do to participate in sports 
um, wow. as a child. And, and so, so it's not that I have it from the very beginning. So I moved to a cluster, a monastery, a Buddhist monastery, very young. And that's how I learned today called mindfulness. Yeah. Um, so I practice a lot of Zen Buddhism, and also um, I was uh, one year participating in Brazil uh, into a Taoist community and learned Tai Chi Chi Kung, Chinese medicine. And so my path has been through uh, working with myself and also my mental health, which was not so good either. Um, so I was a body-based psychotherapist in Argentina, but when I came to Sweden, I decided not to work as a psychologist. So I decided to change and be a physiotherapist. So I'm a behavioral-based physiotherapist in Sweden. Right. And, um, and then I have three masters here and uh, my doctoral, um, my PhD is in rehabilitation medicine. What are your so masters, please? Yeah, I have three masters. What, what, what are they in? They are in uh, psychology. Um, the, the other is in uh, clinical medical sciences, Karolinska, and the other is in physiotherapy. Right, wonderful. And where are you from? You're always from Sweden? You were, you are. You were from uh, Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. Argentina. Yeah. 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 So wonderful. So I'm going to ask you to translate something for me in a minute. <laughs> um, just before we get started, uh, so we've got here um, Ofra from Israel has also joined us, and um, somebody's saying absolutely wonderful that we've got a guest from Sweden, so that's uh, brilliant. Um, Denise says not being able to have grandchildren around is a big issue here in the UK because it's forbidden at the moment, and that is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I myself uh, can't go and see my grandchildren because I can't get on a plane just now. My my grandchildren are in Israel and I can't get to see them because um, even though there I would be allowed to see them, but I can't get out of here. Now, here's something from um, probably somebody that you know, um, but it's a, it's something in Spanish. So uh, that's what... uh, I'm lucky that I had a mother with that intuition. Oh. Uh, just to quit with this allopathic medicine, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree entirely with that. And that's, you know, that's, you know, it's coming through and you can see that you've it obviously helped you. It's obviously Absolutely. changed your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and then we've got it translated. Anyway, so she wrote it in English. What well, luck you had this kind of... So I've just checked your Spanish and it's, uh, and, and you do actually <laughs> really speak it's Spanish. It's <laughs> Okay, so um, wonderful. So I'm going to hand over the broadcast to you, Dr. Graciela Rovner, and we're all waiting to, to, to get from your knowledge, experience, and wisdom. Thank you. And I, I have something to say, but before talking, I yeah. invite all of you to do a little um, embodying act process. An exercise. What do you think about that? It's okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hand everything over to you and you can take the exercise for all of us and then just continue on as you wish. How does yeah. that sound? Okay, so just give me, so just one second then. So here we go. This is a very quiet exercise. And um, when we do this kind of exercise, you are always just invited. And you yourself, you invite your mind and your body to do this. And if there is something that you don't want to follow, it's just not follow. You are free. Um, you are going to or close your eyes or just have your eyes a little, little open, like with a blurring kind of sight in front of you. And just meet with yourself a little and make yourself aware that you are here. And one way to be here is to anchor 
in our body. And so you can just notice where your body is touching the floor, the chair, wherever you are sitting or standing. So if you are sitting, try to move a little so that you can feel your seat bones. And we women, sometimes we need to take out all the muscles because they are only muscles under the seat bones. The, the men don't have that much musculature there. So just so you can feel them because they will be like your feet when you sit. And when you breathe out, just remind yourself of the uh, uh, gravity taking care of you and releasing all your weight through the seat bones down. So you take some inhalations and exhalations and when you breathe out, just remind you and allow the gravity to bring you down. And that also means that you release all the muscular work that's not needed for keeping this posture. That means your belly, could mean your shoulders, arms heavy, the mandibula, so you can open a little your mouth. Even your eyes can rest into their socket. But before you get asleep, so in the next inhalation, you can just press a little with your seat bones and feel how this power generates upwards against the gravity along your bones and you grow up. So you go like this up and down with your breathing. So you follow gravity. When you breathe out and you go against gravity a little, otherwise you will start to levitate when you're breathing. Make yourself aware where this pushing, when you push with your seat bones, this kind of arrow, the force arrow is going up the pelvis, the sacrum, and vertebra by vertebra. And then the head and the ground, the crown, up to the ceiling. So you here are starting to be aware of two powerful forces on you, one down and the other up. And there you are in between them creating space for breathing. So notice how the breathing moves your body. Is there any movement, movement to the front of the body? Is there any movement to the sides. Can you feel any movement backwards? It's like an inner massage to your back.
Is there any movement upwards to your shoulders? Is that movement in turn generating any movement in your neck or head? Is there any movement downwards? Because if you notice this movement downwards will be the diaphragm massaging all the organs in your belly and pushing them down, down, down to the base of the pelvis. So allow this inner massage to be there, this inner space to create bigger openness. And now focus a little to your left lung. It's a smaller one. It moves, it feels like yeah, a ball, sort of, balloon. And you empty it. And when it moves in and out, this one is massaging one of the most important organs, your heart. And notice where your mind tells you, told you when I said heart. What's that for you? Is that an organ? Is that a feeling? A color? A function? What? Temperature. So there you can start going around. There are a lot of rooms in there with a lot of secrets and important things. So you can put your hands somewhere in your left side of your chest and find there What's in your heart? Why, why are you here? And what, how is that related to your heart? What's important in your heart? So when you find what's important for you, the why you are here probably. So allow all your body, each cell of your body to be aware of it. It's like that spreads out this important thing of yours. So you can start feeling the posture that talks about it, that demonstrates this important part of you, this meaning, what's meaningful and important. How is your posture when you are in touch with it? How is your face, your expression? How is your breathing? How do you imagine your voice when you are in touch with what's important for you? How do you move? And what do you do when you are in touch with this important for you? And with this, we start stretching and moving and probably going on. Oh, 
like really allow the body to tell you what is needed and turn and twist and bend and ooh, and then slowly you can do like this with the hands i don't remember the name in english it's like scratching in your hands just to make to allow the uh, the blood pressure to come up and stretch and breathe and come back that was a long one so this was a little um self-care practice to remind ourselves in the body what's important for us um, i work a lot with helping the uh, non-psychotherapist especially i teach physiotherapist which will be pts in america uh, physical therapists um, occupational therapists interprofessional teams to understand understand the processes behind act act is built on processes as then with with psychotherapeutical tools well in physiotherapy in occupational therapy in rehabilitation and behavioral medicine we need to go back to the basics to these processes and then use our own tools to operationalize these processes and not the verbal uh, in the way that psychotherapists do it um, so it is not just doing exercises of being active what's all about is really using each of the processes to change a neuro in a neurophysiological uh, level so the neurology how the nervous system works can be changed because the processes behind act are the empirical based process of changes that are identified empirically so that's what we do um, so it, I'm always very happy to hear that our colleagues, psychologists, recommend their clients to, to be physically active. But I just want to say that that's not the whole thing. It's like if I, as physio, would recommend my patients to, yeah, be mentally active and think. I mean, it's not that. There is much more in this body work, in this embodying the processes and the first step always in all these kind of treatments and rehabilitation or well I'm a pain specialist um, and mental health specialist as a physiotherapist of course but the the first thing we always need to do whether you are a patient a client or a therapist is to implement all these processes with yourself and the area I mainly work with uh, is the self-care. And there, there is a uh, modality of, I call it micro-interventions using um, these processes behind. Dov, I wonder if there are any questions before I go ahead with new exercises or what do you think? Okay, so um, at the moment, I think everybody is just uh, glued to, to what you're doing and haven't had time yet to come through. What um, I find fascinating is um, that mixture that you can see that's very obvious that when you're doing those physical movements, that you're also being very mindful as you're doing them and, and concentrating and focusing on different parts of the body. Um, and that also in the thoughts that they were having, and, and you know, I was doing it along with you. Um, I'm not dressed the same as you, though, but um, I'm uh, definitely following along with you. And, uh, yeah, I find that concentration also on that focusing on exactly what I was doing and not just doing it. You know, it's not just going to, you know, a Zumba class where you just follow the leader and that's it, but you were, we were actually paying attention, if you like, to the thoughts and to, you know, what does heart mean? So there's meaning and purpose um, that's part of the movement as well. And it's not just 
the physical part. And so, yeah, I think that's, I'm definitely guilty of um, recommending to my clients to be physical. <laughs> yeah, you know, so they caught me out. Um, but yeah, I, I need to pay more attention to, you know, not just leaving them with that to, to walk out the door with, okay, I've got to be physical. What does that mean? Um, so I, what I will be asking you is, what do you recommend that we tell our clients how do we, you know, I'm not a specialist in movement like you are, though I do do uh, Qigong. Um, but what, uh, what, you know, what can we recommend to our clients when we say to them, okay, do exercise, um, what would be the best way of, you know, giving that to them? Well, um, I'm conscious about the time here, but uh, you are going into my research now and um in the research, uh, it's very clear that we have different patterns of behavior and different resources, which means, in short, to answer your question, that there is no one answer. Some people will need a lot of really behavioral activation, I mean, really more active, while others will really need more the kind of how do I actively charge my batteries because I am an overdoer. Uh, so in these profiles, I, I identified profiles that psychologists will call it, and when I publish, I had to call it psychological flexibility profiles, but actually in my clinical work, I call it behavioral plasticity hmm. profiles. We are right. differently plastic, changeable, so the way we go, we can reach into a sound movement and it, movement, just to move is not important. Move in, movement, we move in order to participate in our life. That's why we move actually. And by the way, to carry our mind, that's something that psychologists don't like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you can carry your mind to uh, special places in the world like with your grandchildren. So anyway, yeah. uh, there is no one answer. And so in the model I developed, Active Rehab, we learned to do this very special assessment together with the patient because the patient needs to understand their own patterns of behavior, their own plasticity, and how to change that step by step. So there the physios that are being trained or an occupational therapist in this model, they will know how to guide the patient into what they really need, uh, what it regard with body, the physical mind, charging batteries, you know, and, and being able to participate to their life with the whole <laughs> human being they are. Wonderful. So what, what I'm going to, you're going to go now into your next phase. Um, do we have time, do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. we've got time. So if it's okay with you. Yeah. Um, what I'm uh, conscious about is if people are watching this on their own and the replay and so on, will they be able to, you know, take from what you're teaching now and kind of do it with by watching this video to kind of, would that help them or should they not do that? Again, what, what was the question? Well, they're watching you now at home and they're on the replay, so they can watch it over and over again as much as they want. Will oh, they yeah. be able to do some of the exercises that you showed us already and are going to show us now? Would they be able to do that from watching you now? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Absolutely. So that it gives it an, an extra special value. So we're going to, you know, just get yourself ready for one second and we'll uh, move straight back into you to your exercises, thank you. Perfect. I have a friend with me. Uh, he's a, a little naked, so I put this. Uh, we are quite liberal in Sweden normally, and he looks like this, but uh, yeah. So anyway, what I would like to, to help you, many of you probably already do some kind of yoga or some movement. I would like to just add some deep in this kind of work. So the seat bones, we have 
there, it's part of the pelvis, and we have all the vertebrae. We are going to work with this. What is this in terms of ACT? In ACT, we are talking about awareness, and awareness in the body is our structure, is our balance, is our being here. And this pillar is probably the most beautiful construction on the earth. It's so amazing. And so being aware and being here will help us every time we sit or we stand up to create a new body position with awareness. And that will be this mindful part of act, one of the exercises. So what I would invite you is to do, we are going to do an exercise that normally it's called the, the cat and cow, and we do it with in four legs in yoga, but we are going to do it sitting. So that will be that we are going to uh, tilt the pelvis to the front and then go vertebra by vertebra backwards. It's a, like a back bend. And then we are going to tilt the pelvis to the, to the back and we are going to bend vertebra by vertebra and the head like this. So, but we are going to start with finding the pelvis. So you can just have your hands here or back and make yourself aware of your seat bones again. And then we are going to start working on the, working with a little engagement here engage the pelvis and start moving so that you tilt it forward so you create a bigger curve in your back lower back and then you can just tilt a little little back to the back and a little back then and then you tilt to the other so the pubis is coming up and then it will curve in the other way. So you are just moving, rotating to the front of the seat bones and to the back to the seat bones. These kind of exercises, sometimes we are doing when I find people that has very difficult a big difficult to orientate, to be present, just being here in contact with the under, what we have under us, contact with the, the floor in this case, or the chair. And then also to coordinate then movement with their own breathing. So now stop and find your breathing as we did in the beginning. So you breathe out. And when you breathe in, you start tilting the pelvis to the front. The belly bottom comes near your feet or the floor. And then when you breathe out, you tilt to the other. This is also a practice that helps to manage a little stress because it brings you back to your own breath, your own breathing. And that doesn't need to be perfect. It's just allowing your brain to go out from being up there down to the pelvis and being here with you. So whenever you find this pelvis movement, you can integrate the whole uh, spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. And the secret here is when you bend or you do a back bend or a forward bend, 
is not how it looks like, is listening to your vertebrates, listening to what you need. Now you don't need to coordinate with the breathing because sometimes the movement goes slower. So here it's a quite deep work for the brain to follow. And as, I, as Dove said, it's not a mechanic automatic movement. You are always following what's going on. So, and we stop here. So what we do in these exercises is actually uh, training the brain to be in contact with the body. Why? Because the body is always sending us signals. So we are training something that's called interoceptive capacity. Normally we talk about the five sense, senses and if we are skilled in the five senses, we navigate life quite safe. We can take the signs and we can translate and do something with them that it's functional. If I don't understand the signs, I go like coming to a country where I don't, I can't read or understand the language or the culture, I go like, mm, and I get quite stressed and lost. Well, that's the same, but when you are working with senses that come from your inside, that's not the five senses any longer. They are the interoceptive senses. There are many of them. So that's what we do when we are working with awareness, engagement, and openness in active rehab, training the nervous system to be more skilled in translated understanding the signs from your body so you can navigate safely with yourself and start doing behaviors that are really in a self-care path but you first need to really listen and know what you need that's not so easy so that's part of of the work <laughs> i do so don't Okay, that was wonderful. And uh, a lot of things I liked about that. First of all, when you said you don't have to be perfect, that had a, a you know, that really resonated with me because, you know, sometimes when, you, when you're watching somebody like you and, and, and you're doing the, it so gracefully and so really well, um, sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating for somebody who's, not quite used to doing that. And so when you just said, you know, you don't have to be perfect. For me, I already felt that relief of, oh, you know, I really want to continue doing this because, you know, she's just given me permission to, to do it in the best way that I can. That was one of the lessons I got. The second one is I've had an old uh, back injury from the army um, and my lower uh, back, you know, slip discs and whatever. And, and everything's fine now. It's really fantastic. But um, but, but I found that as an exercise also quite, um, you know, relieving. It, it moves that part of my body that was um, sometimes in very much pain. Um, and again, when you bring in that paying attention and getting to know you know, what's actually happening in my body? What's actually happening in my spine? What's that, you know, a lot of the time we just go about using our bodies and sometimes we can use it very well. It's not always that we're in pain and, we, and we're using it very well, but we don't really pay attention or appreciate um, what actually it's doing. You know, the fact that our knees allow us to sit down because it bends in a certain way and, uh, you know, we we can move our pelvis back and forward and, you know, and, and curve our spine in different ways. And I think being mindful of our own bodies, a lot about mindfulness is, well, especially today, it's become a little bit commercialized, but a lot of mindfulness is about, you know, it, you know, just sitting there and kind of zoning out a little bit and trying to empty the mind and all this kind of stuff. But, um, 
what I find is really great about what you just showed us is, you know, it's about being mindful of that movement in your uh, body and how that, you know, that connects because we're moving all the time. Those of us who are privileged enough um, to be able to move and uh, not be uh, paralyzed in any particular way, but um, to be able to move, I think a lot of the time, and I know I've been guilty of that until recently, um, when I started to pay more attention to what I do, um, I think we take a lot of our movement for granted. And it's only yeah. when we start to feel pain, we start to, oh my goodness, or not being able to do something, um, we began to yeah. say, oh my goodness, you know, how important our body is. But up until then, we kind of take it a lot for granted, I think. Yes, but I, 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 what, I, I loved what you said in, in the beginning now, because I work a lot when uh, my ex expertise is working in interprofessional teams and training in clinics, interprofessional teams. And so I love the work together. Uh, I only work with groups. And so uh, working together with a psychologist, because why? You said that this in, in this little, little exercise uh, that brought you uh, this on mind, your injury, the war, whatever you had, right? When you are working with people with trauma, a lot of my patients with chronic pain have had trauma, sometimes very early trauma. There is a lot of very well-trained skills not to bring it up. I mean, really just to not bring it up. <laughs> don't remember, don't feel, feel it. So this working together with a psychologist in, and, and, and integrating the body helps the patient to bring things in a different way and then working from a psychotherapeutical perspective, then it's also an integrating all the time, back and forth. So it's like, also I, I studied expression, uh, expressive art therapies. It's also a way of reaching um, and finding a new perspective of the thing, the story we have, the things we have experienced and put it in a new light. So wow. it was interesting that that this exercise brought you this. Oh and yeah, and, and, yeah. I, and I can see that it could really benefit people like me as well. We're really running short of time. I've gone well over because you're totally fascinating, but I cannot let you go without <laughs> a little bit of what this daily dipping in freezing cold water is about. Well, um, there are a lot of liars in that. Um, I've, I mean, part of me since I came to Sweden and all my own rehabilitation has been to demonstrate to my mind that all of the things I was thinking that I could not do, I could do. So I started running at my 40s. I did these uh, crazy competencies that we do in Sweden with really long distance. I did cross-country skiing 90 kilometers three times without knowing how to ski because I never skied. <laughs> um, and 300 biking, you know, this, these things. It's oh, like wow. Just, just not, <laughs> we say in a, take your thoughts lightly. Well, I crush them. With this, you know? <laughs> just not taking lightly. I just crush them. Um, and that's one part. I mean, this feeling that, yeah, I mean, the cold water, you think it's impossible, but it is possible. And I clock it and I know how long I am in the water and the water is cold. That's one thing. The other is some physiological response that I cannot explain. There are a lot of yeah, whatever. There is not much research about this, but somehow it had helped me a lot with the well-being. I'm very happy, um, much more happy when I when I go from there. It's like woohoo, like this. So um, I oh. never did drugs, uh, so I cannot compare. But I think it's like being a little high, um, and then I'm I don't suffer the cold at all. I'm, I'm really resilient now. Um, so there are a lot of aspects 
I love it. And this contact with the nature and this being outside, even if it's snowing, blowing, blowing all the time here in this, in this city uh, and cold, it's okay. I can go out, I can run, I can be in, in the sea. Things are not limiting me. This is the only one that tries to live. Wow. It's wow. part of that. Challenging. Uh, 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 uh... Yeah, yeah, well, 300, uh, 90 kilometer ski without knowing how to ski. Now, that's something we'll talk about. But I know another... how to fall down because I practiced uh, martial arts. <laughs> so I'm very, very good in falling down and going up quickly. That's the only thing I do. Oh, wow. Much. Yeah. So um, somebody said a great team, you know, mixing the psychologist with the physical therapist with that act and the body, I think, yeah, absolutely. It really goes very well together. And someone just echoing you with crushed them thoughts. Absolutely. <laughs> with, with that, um, Dr. Graciela Rovna, thank you very, very much for joining me. Thank on you the everyone for being uh, willing to follow these uh, crazy exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.